Hello guys, this is the uh, Steve O Staple. Welcome back to Aladdin Part 3. This is it! Yeah, if you guys are enjoying more of this content, just let me know, uh, down, know down below if you want more Kingdom Hearts as well. Also guys, sorry for the lack of videos, our uh, tape's been pretty hectic at the moment with uh, producing an OB that's coming up and other stuff as well, so yeah, sorry for not um, having the video out last week and not showing off any Alien or Kingdom Hearts whatsoever. Alright, so topics of the week, shall we? Number one, what does everybody think of the new Xbox that's been announced? I think it's the Scorpio, I don't know, tell me in the comments, I'm pretty sure it might be Scorpio. Not totally sure. Uh, number two. Let's talk about Monster Hunter Iceborne. Who's getting it? And tell me in the comments below. Maybe we can even link up and get a few hunting parties down later on. Number three. Thoughts on the Halo Reach uh, delayed delayed um, release for the Xbox One. Really look, was really looking forward to playing that again. Also because uh, Microsoft were generous enough to give away the multiplayer for free. And the only thing that would uh, be paid is the five fight and the actual um, single player campaign. Besides TAFE, yeah, all I've been playing lately is um, Halo 2 Project Cartographer, that Halo 2 mod. Um, I really recommend you guys try that mod out. It's really good, it's free. Um, you get all the multiplayer maps and everything from base Halo 2. And the whole just um, general conciseness of the gameplay is really fun. The only problem is there isn't really many players on at the moment. And Halo 1 Custom Edition as well, that game is fucking great. It's been out since like 2006 and it's still going strong with how good it is I reckon. So yeah guys, don't ditch the classics. The modern games might be good now, but the classic games, oh, the nostalgia, everything, it just, oh, just hits your heartstrings doesn't it? It just hits your heartstrings. I mean who else remembers Blood Gulch? Years ago playing that on the computer, chilling with mates, land parties, all that good stuff. Those were the days. Nowadays, yeah, it's good and everything with the matchmaking and all that, but the, you, you can't really get the actual memories and all that stuff back online nowadays. You can create a similar experience, but it's just not the same. Also, what happened to split screen and co-op? Nowadays, uh, all these companies, they think, oh yeah, let's just do online multiplayer. Fuck split screen, fuck the um, family or friend um, companionship. So yeah, also let us know uh, your favourite split screen games back in uh, the past. What's your favourite split screen games that you played back in, uh, let's say 2009, 2008? Maybe even earlier in your childhood. Obviously I mentioned Halo uh, 1 and 2. Those were one of the main ones I played when I was younger. Um, Burnout as well, I'm pretty sure they had split screen. I don't know if it was Burnout 3 or Burnout Revenge. But I really remember doing split screen on those games. Oh, such good fun back in the day. No worries, no, um, nothing to really worry about. Just having a really good ball of a time. So yeah, I also really recommend uh, Burnout Paradise on PS4 and Xbox One. And I think it's on PC too. Really recommend that game. Um, it's really fun. Brings back all the old uh, memories as well. Also picked up Mortal Kombat 11, so stay tuned for more gameplay, story and tips regarding Mortal Kombat 11. Also guys, if you could give uh, some more tips on Mortal Kombat 11 and what fighters I should be choosing for beginner play. One thing I've noticed is um, the, the juggle, the juggle system that was in Mortal Kombat 9 and 10, it's way less prominent now. You can still do it, but you can't really like juggle someone to in the middle of the wall and just keep whacking at them. You have to actually do more combos in between. So in that way, I guess it's a better game than um, some of the other ones. But at the same time, I, I miss the juggle system as well. Because I used to use that a lot to try to chain combos together when I was playing like, so for example, Scorpion, Ermac, just characters like that. So yeah, let me know your main as well in Mortal Kombat 11. Very uh, disappointed that Ermac didn't return. He was my main in Mortal Kombat 10. But I think due to the story mode he didn't return or something. I need to do a playthrough again of number 10. I like the whole time travel aspect of the story mode though. That's a really cool thing that they did. Wasn't really expecting that before I picked up the campaign. 
Also, I think I stated a while ago that I was going to do Dream Drop Distance after this game. Um, things have kind of changed with that. I'm probably going to do three first. Then I'm going to go into Dream Drop and all that. Just because the mechanics are newer, they're better, and I just want to show off uh, number three for you guys. Plus, they added um, that new mode, Critical Mode, and the Remind DLC is coming out. I forgot when, so tell me in the comments below. Um, I forgot when Remind is actually coming out. I'm not sure on that one. Also, as this is just the start of Aladdin, we've still got another few parts to it as we have to return to do the re-return our levels that are in this game. So guys, thoughts on YouTube and their policies. What is your thoughts on that big burden? One of the things that really got to me is the changing of the subscriber system that's coming out, I think in April. Sorry, I'm um, August. The month that we're in right now. So if you guys don't know, they're gonna change the subscriber count for all channels. So let's just say someone has 3,900 subs, for example, right? It will just say 3,000 on the sub count. It won't actually say um, 3,900 at all. That's the thing, right? It's gonna, for people who have channels like me, it's gonna like affect how, how people might see a channel. I mean, I don't know. How important is sub count to you guys? Let me know in the comments below. Um, for me, it's not very important. It's more about just getting that content out there and just trying to make people laugh and um, enjoy the um, content that's actually being shown. So yeah, I kind of wish I joined YouTube um, a few years ago and not now because of all these changes that Google think are doing good for the um, channel and the, the, the site. Not actually good what they're doing for the site and everything. It's worse if anything. So Google, without us content creators, your YouTube will be fucked. So don't fuck over the creators. The creators are creating content for your site. Without content for your site, this whole YouTube thing will be fucked. Oh, get our message loud and clear, Google. Don't fuck up the site. Content creators is your life support. Without your life support, there would be no YouTube. There would be nothing for you, Google. So carefully tread. Carefully tread where you go, Google. So yeah, that's my thoughts on YouTube and the way Google is treating it at the moment too. Also, just want to do a quick shout out to some of my mates. Um, Feared Patriot, he's doing a podcast at the moment as well, starting up a channel. So please subscribe to him. I'll put the link to his channel down below. And King Nick, who does my um, music at the end of each of my videos. He's one of the people on the podcast, King Nick, so please subscribe to him as well. Um, his subscription link is always in the bottom of the description, just to let you guys know. And to hit him up to uh, make some new outro or intro music for you guys. He's, um, he wants to pursue a career in music type thing, so guys, hit him up for music, intros, and outros. The outro he did for mine is fucking brilliant, so hit him up, man. Hit him up.
Jafar bottled up, or he's gonna destroy Agrabah. So guys, if my voice sounds a bit weird, it's because I'm um, coming down with something, I think. I don't know if it's a cold or it just, uh, yeah, it feels really bad at the moment. Like always, the button X on your PlayStation controller is always your best friend. Just whack, whack, whackity whack. Just like the wise Mickey Mouse once said, Hey Sora, we just kill some motherfuckers right now. I think Sora's been taking that advice ever since then, to be honest. He just, he just always has to whack, whack, whack and kill any Heartless that he sees in his way. I mean, these Heartless might have lives, they might have stories to tell, they might have things to actually tell to the people, but Sora here, he's just whacking and killing them. Like, dude, you know you love the Keyblade, Sora, but you actually have to think about what you're killing sometimes, you know? You can't just keep whacking and killing all the time. It's like in Mario, what what if Mario is actually the real villain here? What if he's the guy we shouldn't be rooting for? What if he's the guy we should actually be against? What happens if this is just Mushroom Kingdom propaganda to, just against Bowser? Let's go! Hello? Stop your whining and hand it over! Oh no, I'm trading it for treasure! This lamp is going to bring me riches! Oh no, you don't know! Get back here, you little... Also, I love how Pete's just running away, like what a real puss, hey? Like dude, you could just fucking try to fight us. But no, I'm just gonna run away and spawn more Heartless like he always does. Speaking of Pete, what the fuck did they do to him in Kingdom Hearts 3, hey? They really fucked up his character there, didn't they? Um, he's hardly in Kingdom Hearts 3. So that's a real shame, isn't it? He's actually a pretty cool villain. Even though he just runs away and all that, I like his dialogue and his quirky charm. Alright, so top villains down below guys. Comment top villains down below in Kingdom Hearts 2. If you're talking about all the organization members, definitely, um, Zigbar for sure. And Zemnus, he's just fucking badass, Zemnus. He doesn't give a flying fuck about anything. I just love his cold-hearted nature towards everything, and yeah, his fucking lightsabers on his arms. That shit is fucking sick. So yeah, guys, tell me in the comments below, favorite villain? Or even favorite crossover, but I'm pretty sure I already mentioned that in one of my other videos, haven't I? Yes. Hehehehe <laughs> 
nice try, bird brain. Just wait till Jafar's free. He's gonna make one beauty of a heartless. Princely little muffin, you! Cosmic travel can get so lonely without a friend! Good thing I left you forlorn and genie-less! Oh, the humanity! <laughs> genie? Hey, Al, have you been putting up weight? Oh, of course! What am I saying? You're living at the palace now! Aladdin! Jasmine! I can just picture it! Wait, tell me, am I being a pest? Just a big blue pest? Oh, who cares, Al? I'm just so glad to see you! Genie! Oops. I'll teach you to make a fool out of me! Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Time for plan B! I'm finishing you mugs off right now! These two doofuses seem pretty easy to fight. Um, I really just recommend using the magic, you know. Um, for the ice guy, use a fire magicker, and for the fire guy, use water. I'm pretty sure water takes him out faster. So yeah, guys, tell me in the comments, um, does it go faster if you use elementals during the bosses? Because it certainly looks that way with the way they look. Obviously, as for all bosses, always look out for those ratchet commands. They're the most single important thing in Kingdom Hearts 2, I would say, like just in terms of fighting any bosses that you just see or go around. And this Halloween Keyblade, it can get you through most of the game now, really. Um, there's nothing really else to really get unless you want to get like the Ultimate Keyblade or that XP one. I forgot the name of it, the XP one you can get. Once you get that one, you can get like double the XP from killing certain enemies. So if you guys need a grind and all that, I'll pick up on that blade. Um, I'll be covering that soon in the next few parts that we get to once we get in closer to the end of the game. Um, we're close-ish now, but we just need to get through the second parts of each world. Also, let me know in the comments, do you like the second world system? And do you think more games should be adopting this instead of bringing out DLC with the same type of level areas? Sorry, I'm going to have to put this game under the bus, but Destiny. Destiny did that where there's certain parts of the levels that they locked out, and guess what? It's DLC. Well, it's like, why don't you just make it an unlockable or part of the story later on? Alright, we're getting him down to his last health. We're whacking at him a bit more, a bit more. And there you have it. Two fatsos are dead. They need to go on Biggest Loser to lose more weight, it seems. time I'm gonna get you yet yeah <laughs> all right
He must have secretly stolen it from the Cave of Wonders. I guess some things are just hard to resist. I love Sora, what is it? I think it's time for us to go. Will you be back? We will, I promise. Okay, lamp charm. Sweet, 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 sweet. All right, guys. See you guys for the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and press that notification bell.